Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and over the past week, I've received a lot of packages. And all of these packages and boxes contain most of the supplies I need to complete what's in this box. This is the Lian Lee Land Cool 2 mesh that I disassembled in my last video. If you missed that or are curious about how I turned this case into this box of parts, you can check that video out here or you can find a link to it in the description below. But today, what I'm gonna do is open up all of these packages and get started on fabricating the panels that I'll be replacing in this case, which is the goal for today. So to start, let's open up this box from Zometry, which should contain the aluminum panels I had cut the size for the project. All right, so I have my eighth inch panel, which will be the top of the PSU shroud, and our three eighths panel, which will become the motherboard tray. All right, let's see what else we got. Okay, this is just some brushed aluminum vinyl wrap. This will be for some detail pieces. All right, I was actually running low on this stuff, but here's an 810 piece assortment of all the different screws you need when you're working on a computer. Have your fan mounting screws, motherboard mounting screws, extra standoffs, hard drive screws, even some thumb screws. And this one even came with a little screwdriver. All right, this is a new, just a new tap set. Some M3 size washers, those always come in handy. Some wet dry sandpaper. This goes from like 120 all the way up to 2000, which I'll need to finish the aluminum. It even came with a sanding block. Hmm. Now this is another tap. This is a two millimeter tap, which I'll need. I need to cut some aluminum bar for this project. I got a new metal cutting blade for my miter saw. This should be a bunch of M2 and M3 screws, which are kind of difficult to find here in America. And finally, this little package from Mainframe Customs. This is for this project, but this is for a later video, but I'll just show you what's in here anyway, since I'm unboxing stuff. I got some new 16 gauge wire that I'm gonna do for the custom cablings on this build. And then, for those custom cables, I got some white ATX connectors. And that's it. Let's get to work. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is just clean these panels off with a little alcohol to get some of the ink markings off, and then this one's gonna take a little bit more work. was pretty easy. This one, it's going to take a bit more work. So for this, I'm just going to use the same alcohol, but this time I'm going to use some fine steel wool to get some of this uh, corrosion off. Okay, now that I got it pretty clean, I'm just gonna start polishing it up. And to do that, I'm gonna wet sand it down. I'm gonna start with about 600 grit, and I'm gonna work all the way up to probably about 2400 to get it a nice polished finish. Uh, luckily, the 1 8 sheet has already got a pretty good polished finish. I can probably start at about 1800 here to keep going with that one. This one's gonna take a little work, so I'll start here with the 600.
That's looking good and shiny, so let me see. That should be the last pass with the 3000 grit. Good. All right. Now to finish it up, I got some polish and a polisher. All right, so that's the first side done. That's about the consistency I'm going for there. Tough to see in the camera, but it's, you know, reflecting the pegboard and the tools there pretty well. And now I have the other side and the other panel to do, so. Okay, now that the panels are nice and shiny and buffed out, I want to scratch them all up because what I want to do is match as closely as I can the brushed silver look on these VRMs and this runs at about a 45 degree yeah pretty much right on a 45 degree so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the bottom panel because if I mess that up, I can just do the other side. And then I'll use this as my straight edge and I'll just very lightly start running some 320 grit over the that looks pretty good actually couple of spots there but I don't know if you can see it in this lighting that looks pretty good I think the 320 worked out just right okay All right, and the last thing I need to do is I got to clean it again one more time because you can see already fingerprints on there. And then because raw aluminum really is a fingerprint magnet, I'm going to give it a very light clear coat to protect the aluminum itself. Okay, this is the point where I ran into logistical problems that slowed the project down. I was already behind because the aluminum plates got here on Friday. Since I usually post to YouTube on Sundays, this only gave me about a day and a half to complete the project and edit the video. I was up to the challenge, but then I started checking my tools and supplies and I discovered that 
there was no three millimeter tap in the metric tap set I bought. There was supposed to be, but there wasn't. And that tap is a critical tool when fabricating a motherboard tray from scratch, so I needed to find one ASAP. Unfortunately, it was already later in the evening and the stores were closed. So first thing Sunday morning, I got up, checked the app for stockage and headed to the Home Depot that had it in stock. But then it wasn't there. But what was there? <laughs> impulse buy. Yeah, a $176 impulse buy. But with my military discount, it was only 158 bucks. Anyway, that's not really what I was there for. So I grabbed a sales associate and he checked his app because obviously the one on my phone sucks. And he said that the Home Depot across town had one metric tap kit in stock. I said, are you sure? Because my app said there was one here and he said that app sucks. Confirmed. So I headed across town and woohoo, there it was. So back home, but of course now I had a new toy or uh, tool to assemble. By the time that was all done, half the day was gone and I started rushing to get the panels fabricated. And since I was rushing, mistakes were made. So now I was resigned to just take my time and complete the project. And that's why for the first time since I started my channel, I skipped the weekly upload. Since I took the entire week to work on this, let me just give you the quick version of the fabrication process. I started by marking, drilling, and tapping the holes for the motherboard standoffs. With the motherboard mounted in place, I marked the locations for all the cable pass-throughs. And then drilled individual holes for each wire. For the shroud panel, I gridded out locations for the airflow holes and center punched, drilled a 1 8 pilot hole, then drilled the quarter inch holes and finally beveled each hole. I then planned out the cable runs and fabricated the cable guides from a half inch angle aluminum. Finally, I drilled and tapped the holes to mount the guides. In total, I drilled and beveled or tapped 485 holes for this project. And ta-da! Here are the finished panels with the standoffs installed, as well as the cable guides. This was also a change to the plan to do with logistics. These were supposed to be a smaller two millimeter screw, but after I drilled the two millimeter holes, I couldn't find my two millimeter tap. Another missing tap, but I, I received this one. I went back to the footage to make sure and I, I just lost it. So I had to redrill each hole and tap three millimeter threads. Now I mentioned mistakes and you see these notches. Well, this one is for the plastic retention pin on the front panel. And since I was rushing, I cut it in the wrong spot the first time. I just spaced and cut it on the top. So I recut it on the front side. Good to go. Wrong. The front panel only has retention pins on the top and the bottom, not in the middle. So I didn't need any notches at all. Anyway, that brings us today, which is Friday again. So we need to get this thing put back together with the new panels. So for time's sake, I'm just walk you through some of the technical parts of the reassembly and speed through the more mundane parts. And the first thing I'll start with is the drive caddy. Since I have it out, I'll replace the back panel with the hot swappable back plate I picked up at Micro Center. Next, let's reinstall the bottom shroud panel. 
Now, to do this, I need to just rivet it back in place. So, I have my rivet gun. Oh, crap, I said gun. I probably just demonetized this entire video. It's a rivet tool, a, a hand tool. Anyway, all those rivets I drilled out in the previous video, I have to put back in, which is very simple. I have 1 8 inch rivets. I have the correct tip on the rivet tool, the green one. So to use a rivet tool, you take your rivet and then the short end, the fat end, goes into the two pieces you're trying to connect together, right? Through both holes. And then you slide your rivet tool onto the pin, give it a couple squeezes, and it'll cut it off flush, mounting those two pieces together for you. One more time, we're gonna take our rivet, insert it in through both holes on both pieces, give it a few squeezes, and that's it. All right, let me finish this up. Okay, time to see if this beast of a panel fits. Now, to secure this, I drilled and tapped screw holes in the side of the panel. So instead of rivets, I'm actually gonna use screws to hold it in. Okay, so far so good. Seems to fit well. Let's go ahead and get that new shroud panel installed. Now for this, I'm just gonna use some mounting tape to hold it down. I was gonna attempt to screw it in from underneath, but tapping into 1 8 inch aluminum without going through the panel can be tricky. Sometimes you need some really small screws, uh, which I had the two millimeter screws, but then again, I lost that tap. So I think mounting tape will work just fine. All right, so it just occurred to me, I haven't actually test fit this with the tray in. I believe these standoffs down here are gonna get in the way, trying to get that in. So let me go ahead and just pull those out. All right, now. Let's see. All right, that looks good. All right, let's move on. We'll do the top panel next. Everything lined up, that's a good sign. Let's get it riveted in. Okay, looking good. Now that's all the you know technical stuff. I think all the rest of the stuff just screws and mounts right on. So let me go ahead and get that stuff on. And project successful. Ah. 
I even screwed in the motherboard to make sure everything lined up and it all looks good. Now, of course the build is far from over and unfortunately it'll stay like this for a bit longer. The next step is to build and install all the custom cabling, but both suppliers of the platinum gray sleeving I need are sold out and I just think that the shades on either side of that are just too dark or too light for this build and just won't look right. Also, the 850 watt power supply I want for this build isn't available, unless I'm willing to pay like $280 and I'm not. So I'm not sure if I should build full cables for the Corsair modular pinout or just extensions so I can use any PSU. I also don't have the graphics card I want yet as it sold out so I may just buy another in-stock 2080 Ti and mod it to match the build. That could be a fun video in itself or maybe I'll go with an RTX 3000 series card. I'll have to see what Nvidia announces in just over two weeks now. I also can't find the silver Lian Li Bora digital fans I want in stock at anywhere close to MSRP. What I do have is the memory, which I'll be removing and modding the heat spreaders to give it the same brushed aluminum look. I have the CPU, a uh, Ryzen 7 3700X and the Lian Li Galahad 240mm AIO in white and silver I pre-ordered is on its way, so stay tuned for a full review of that. Also, if you aren't already subscribed and don't want to miss the rest of this build project, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and if you liked the video, let me know with a comment or clicking the thumbs up. Also guys, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I've answered every question on all my videos so far, and I plan on keeping up for as long as I can. Anyway, that's it for this one. It's been a long, sometimes frustrating week, but hopefully the rest of the build goes more to plan. I hope to see you in the next one, guys. Until then, stay safe.